update a product, but it's new enough, I kind of bumped to the top. So we used to carry a chiclet keyboard. The company went out of business. I've been meaning to get a replacement, and I finally did. And um, it's a really great replacement. This is a USB keyboard. I use this with single board computers, um, but you can also use it with my controllers. I have USB host. It is an everyday USB keyboard. Things I like about it, it has arrow keys, um, which not all mini keyboards have. The back yeah. space isn't too bad. There's an escape key, there's function keys. It's very compact. It's like 12 inches by four and a half inches. Tiniest full featured and keyboard. And it feels good. Like the keys feel good. Is it a daily yeah. keyboard? Maybe not, but once I'm debugging For you know, little, something or if I want to make like single a- Single board computers. Yeah, single sure. board computers or my controllers. Um, it's great and it's very compact right. and silicon. Here's the thing, I'll just break it down. You don't want your giant computer plugged into the single board computer. It looks ridiculous. You're we keyboard, all yeah. know. We all know it does. You don't need a numpad. It's oh. like black socks and slippers and shorts. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Okay. Um, okay. Next up, this uh, SNES-like USB game controller. We're going to be using this in a couple of projects, and so I wanted to get it in stock. Um, it's a USB connector game controller. It looks like an SNES controller. Obviously, it's not. It's just compatible. But what I like is it's got the shoulder buttons, the D-pad, you have the select and start, and then A, B, X, Y. So it's yeah. really good for playing retro games, um, either like you know Nintendo Classic or Sega or Super Nintendo, or you could just use it as your you know general purpose um, you know gaming yeah. interface. It will work with you know like Retro Pi on the Raspberry Pi. In this case, I think um, our photo team just downloaded a um, emulator and just decided to play. Donkey Kong Jr., which is cool. Um, it does show up as a gamepad, not a keyboard or mouse, so just be aware of that. Yeah. If you don't have gamepad support in your software, you'll have to read the HID commands to, to get all the button presses. Okie dokie, next up. Okay, we have a couple of pre-assembled versions of breakouts that people have been asking for. So this is the STEM IQT to a and rotary encoder. It's a iPod-like rotary encoder with a button in the middle. And we had this where you're like, you would have to solder on the encoder yourself. And some people are like, I want something plug and play ready to go. This is now plug and play ready to go. The encoder comes soldered on already for you. Um, you just plug it in over I squared C and you can make your own like cool iPod-esque interface. Okay. Um, speaking of, there's more. And then this is the plain breakout. So this is the QT, so keep going. Oh yeah, that was the other yeah. one, sorry. That's a demo for it. Um, this is the breakout that does not have I squared C. It's like a bare breakout, so it's a lot less expensive. But a lot of microcontrollers have built in encoder support. So there's mm -hmm. uh, five switches up, down, left, right, center, and then the rotary encoder center wheel. So now you can go to the demo video. Yeah, I made two mistakes in the show tonight. One was a sound file I put in the wrong slide, and then this one. Yeah, so you can see you can rotate yeah. it around. Okay, so now they just come with the encoder pre-soldered. So mm -hmm. if you, you don't want to have to like do the work, you don't have to. Okay, next up. Um, um, another WFL variant. This time it's of the ESP32 S2 reverse TFT, um, a popular board. So people are like, I want to mount this somewhere and I don't want the antenna in the way. I want to have an external antenna. Um, this one has a WFL connector. It's not UFL, it's WFL. It's slightly different. It does not fit UFL. We have a WFL to RPSMA adapter in the store, um, or maybe you have one already, plug it in, and now you can mount your antenna externally. Um, again, great for if you want to have it in an enclosure or you want to have better gain on the um, antenna. You use a bigger antenna, you're gonna be able to reach farther. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, we have another fully assembled uh, board. This time it's the 128 by 64 OLED Featherwing. Uh, really popular. It's a nice big display, uses the SH1107, has a stomach QT port on it. It's a feather wing that you would plug into any of our boards and over I squared C you can um, display um, you know, beautiful black and white graphics. And I worked with Arduino and CircuitPython and now it comes with the header pre-soldered on so it's even easier to use. Yeah, people are using our products to show them off and get millions in funding because yeah. Our stuff looks so awesome. It looks unreal. Okay. Um, and start of the show. Yeah, sort of, kind of. We just we don't have yeah. a star, but this is yeah. you know the Pico Two W. So 
If you like the Pico 2W with the down comes with headers, this is the RP2350 chip with like the debug connector. It's got the um, RM2 module, their uh, Broadcom chip, um, with FCC and C certification, um, micro USB, four megabytes of flash, the buck converter, the boot button, um, the no labels for pins on the top. I guess you have to look on the bottom. Now comes with headers pre-attached. So if you want to use this um, quickly and easily without having to do any soldering, um, you can now have a Wi-Fi connected microcontroller ready to go with headers, plugs into a breadboard. Or what I really like is it plugs into a 40 pin socket too. So if you have like one of those old school dip 40 pin sockets, this will fit quite nicely on it. Okay, and that is new products. Yay, new, new.